talk about how to build a custom solution in SharePoint 2013 and 2016 the easy way. Hey guys, this is Deshaun Clark coming back with coming back to you with more SharePoint uh, new tech, new development. But we're going to take a different spin so on this one. So let me uh, let's go through this deck real quick. And so what we want to do, we want to build a uh, a custom solution in SharePoint 2013, 2016. So the first question you may be asking, Deshaun, you're usually on the cutting edge or, you know, been preaching about SharePoint Online and modern sites and, and modern custom development, React and framework and all this other stuff. So if you've seen some of my previous videos, you would notice that we did a lot of walkthroughs in that tech. When I'm finding a lot of feedback I'm getting is that a lot of SharePoint developers are getting overwhelmed which is very understandable, right? So uh, what we want to do, we want to take baby steps. So this is a series that says no SharePoint developer left behind, meaning that we want to make sure that everyone, uh, there's a smoother transition. So, so when you get into the modern development, as you will see, especially if you looked at some of the uh, early, some of my other videos with React and the Tic Tac Toe and the uh, custom list uh, in the modern SharePoint development, there's so much new technology out there. And a lot of developers, if you're like me, you came from a C Sharp .NET type background, so you didn't play too much in JavaScript. If you did, it was very simple, light UI pieces. But this type of JavaScript, these type of frameworks are very, very um, robust. And they're meant to replace the .NET controls and components uh, that we're kind of used to from a C-sharp uh, perspective. So what we want to do, let's say, okay, let's take something that we kind of are used to in SharePoint 2013, 2016. We're kind of used to that WSP.NET web part development with .NET controls and C-sharp backends, you know, code behind and all this other good stuff. How do we transition it? from that into something very light if we take baby steps. So we're gonna actually take Angular as our framework of choice uh, as a development piece to uh, custom develop these components in SharePoint 2013 and 2016. Another piece of that, when you get down to the modern development, when SharePoint Online, you do a lot with REST API services. We have, obviously, you know, you have the, um, you have the out of the box REST API, you have the, um, I'm, I'm losing the name of it, but this the big one that's uh, that's kind of taken over. It'll come to me, sorry. But you you have a lot of different REST APIs and many different uh, families of REST APIs out in SharePoint Online. So what we want to do is, okay, how do we interact with that? Because usually once you get your pattern down for one, there's very small tweaks that are needed to use any of them. And that's even outside of SharePoint. So if you're doing REST API against Facebook or Google or Amazon or in any of these other services and cognitive services, Azure services, all of these you know, kind of follow the same pattern. You make a call, you get JSON back, you process the JSON. So what we're going to do, we're going to start building that framework, that baseline on how do you interact with these REST API components and uh, how do you also build your custom ones? As you will soon find out, working with the out-of-the-box SharePoint REST API, is it gets you probably about 70-80% there. There are certain things that you want to make try to avoid, like chatty services to where you're making five or six different calls just for one feature. Or there may be gaps in the REST API to where you're trying to do something like filtering on managed uh, manage data columns, as an example. And you can see there's no old data support for that. So there are certain scenarios that would drive you to a custom REST API, uh, and we'll talk about those, and we'll actually build those step by step. So, I, you know, again, it's, it's just a, all about the smooth transition into all of this new tech that will kind of serve as a baseline or a primer to where when you get to SharePoint Online, it, everything is not new. It's not like you're going from a hot sauna into an icy bath ice bath right so you know what we want to do is just kind of smooth that transition lay out that framework uh, and kind of work within the environment that we're somewhat used to uh, the other piece of that is to see some like the client side object model uh, this is just a new way of interacting with uh, SharePoint especially with SharePoint online because there's no DLL there's no references to 15 high 16 high full trust DLLs you kind of have to make these service side uh, I'm sorry a remote service type calls 
with those, there's a lot of nuances with, you know, execute query, how much you can do before execute query, uh, what you have to do as far as hydrating and loading different properties and stuff like that. So we're going to start to transition into those. So all, every custom REST API that we build will be built on the CSOM piece. Even though we are developing on-prem, we want, again, the concept or in the mode of writing these remote services, interacting with CSOM, and uh, kind of communicating back to SharePoint, even though it's on-prem, okay? Uh, and then the last piece is uh, for us, you know, what we're going to cover and, and why we're going this route. Again, you know, as you kind of pick up the theme, it's all about, you know, okay, let's easy transition into this because there's so much new technology out there. What we're going to do, we're going to build a lot of reusable concepts and patterns, especially from a JavaScript framework perspective. Of course, we're using Angular out in SharePoint Online, uh, I think React is probably the go-to. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you hear me mention that, that I think though uh, the, the new modern development supports Angular, uh, there is a lot of ease of use and a lot of plumbing that you get for free if you go the React way. Um, and, and I just think that, you know, it's more of a natural fit. But what we're going to do so that we kind of get primed up and ready and geared up for uh, the concepts and patterns that we would probably leverage in React, we're going to use the version of Angular, I think it's 1.6 or 1.7 uh, or 1.62 or some, something along those lines, that it's going to give us the component model, which is like the whole base concept of React. So once we leverage the component model, you will see how we can leverage a lot of the, the UI pieces and really some design and, t and UI design and some other concepts that will be reusable once you get out there to SharePoint Online and in the React world. We will kind of see some of those concepts and um, best practices here. Okay, so what are we going to cover? What will we cover? The first thing we're going to do is going to, we, so basically we're going to build custom solutions to SharePoint. I'm going to show you how to do this, what I would consider the easy way, okay? So we're going to do that by leveraging uh, CSOM Angular Web Custom Web, Web API, which is like the, cu the custom REST API that we'll build. So we're going to build that off of the .NET Web API uh, framework, uh, which is just uh, another component of the MVC, but without the pages and all this other good stuff. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how do we structure our projects into taking advantage of that. Uh, we're also going to take a look at how do you take a very, very custom UI, which I'm going to show you here in a second, and leverage that uh, in SharePoint and actually integrate that and develop that and uh, migrate that into SharePoint. And I'm actually going to show you a very easy way. So what we're going to have, we're going to have a design package. And if you look in the description, section of this video you should have a link there to the zip file that will allow you to download this package and a lot of these other starter page layouts and master pages and stuff like that uh, that we'll be using um it, it's just that this designer had no clue about sharepoint actually they did not design this uh portal this job portal that we're going to create for sharepoint it was actually a simple job portal um in uh, standard HTML responsive design bootstrap framework, uh, that type of deal using jQuery for a lot of bootstrap animations, um, but no clue that we're going to integrate this in SharePoint. So this designer said, hey, here's the template for this portal. You can use this and convert it to WordPress or uh, site core or SharePoint or whatever the case may be. And SharePoint usually is not part of that conversation because very few designers have a sense of SharePoint, uh, especially from a custom uh, piece of it. So what we're going to do, we're going to say, you know what, we can take any design, and, and hopefully you will see this, that we can take any design, it's responsive design, it's going to be working out of the box responsively, and we're going to migrate and convert that into SharePoint and get that, to, that design to look, and hopefully pixel to pixel, pixel perfect, right, in SharePoint. I know, that's, uh, that's a big promise, but we're going to deliver. Okay, so the last one, we're going to talk about uh, technical design practices uh, in SharePoint. What, what are some of the key decisions that need to be made on how do we take this UI design? What does that equate to as far as what's going to be in the list, what's going to be list-driven, what's going to be reusable content-driven? Obviously, what we're going to do, I keep saying obviously, but I, I shouldn't take a lot of this for granted that you know what I'm thinking and you are in my mind. Uh, I think I've just been doing this for so long that it, it becomes second nature, but 
so please don't get offended if I say obviously. But what we're going to do, we're going to leverage the publishing template within SharePoint. So we're going to deal with massive pages, page layouts, custom pieces like that, uh, subsites, lists, and libraries, and you know where to store our custom design files and all this other good stuff. So we're going to go through some technical design best practices on how we do that, as well as when we get into the Angular piece, how do you want to structure your site? Where should you be putting your services, your components, your modules, and all this other good stuff? If you have to write custom filters and directives, where does that stuff live? So we'll go through all of that, and, you know, a nice structure, repeatable structure uh, that we can leverage. And then also our um, our development environment is going to be very light. Actually, we're going to be developing right off our laptops uh, without SharePoint uh, installed, right? And we're going to be leveraging Visual Studio 2017, I think, uh, cust community uh, edition. So there's no MSDN required. Uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, we're going to do, you will be able to do hopefully with zero dollars spent. Um, and, and this is going to make it uh, a way to where you can uh, start to do some of this at home. The one requirement though, the one requirement is that you will have to have access to a SharePoint environment to do this. But the good news is we're going to try to do most of this. And there's an edge case, and I'll highlight that when we get to it. But we're going to try to do most of this through the browser as a site collection admin. You will not require access to the server itself. Uh, edge, you know, up until this point, I would say 90% of this, you will not require access to the server itself. Uh, you will be able to upload most of the stuff via the browser uh, and then also through the publishing feature through Visual Studio, which is something that I think a lot of uh, SharePoint developers uh, have not been have had the opportunity to take a closer look at, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. And it makes things a lot simpler. Um, and then because of CSOM, all of that's remote. So we'll be able to write those CSOM services remotely and um, interact with SharePoint that way. So a lot of cool things are coming up and it's going to be dealing with SharePoint 2013 initially, uh, but I think 13 and 16 are very similar. I would say 95, 97% similar based on the pieces that we're going to work on. There may be some deltas with the page layouts and the master page, but I think I have a starter package for both. So we should be good to go. What should you expect? What's coming up next? Well, we're going to do this new video series, right? And if you know me, if you've seen a lot of my stuff on my YouTube channel, you notice that I'm notorious for not finishing series. And part of that is because, no, I'm not lazy. I just get extremely busy once uh, clients uh, start calling, right? So what I've, what I've done is I'm trying to pare down a lot of that interaction with the clients. Uh, I want to get through this series because I think just on the feedback that I'm getting a lot from LinkedIn and Facebook and people that are hitting me up uh, via email, a lot of my colleagues and friends and folks that I work with in the past are kind of hitting me up. Uh, and, 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 you know, I, the, the underlying theme, they ask me a lot of questions and, and a lot of go to. And I was like, wow, you know, those are key core concepts that, you know, that we're, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions on. What if, what if we did this transitional type series uh, to kind of help uh, prime the way for modern development? So a new series is coming out. I'll try my best to complete it. I'm going to hit it hard as hard as I can. Um, I'm definitely going to do a drip approach because I think if I go in the closet and try to develop this entire series and to release all the videos at once, two disadvantages. One, it will take forever. It'll probably be 2019 before you get it. Uh, two... I will not get feedback on if this is helping what needs to be clarified. So with this drip approach, I will be able to release a video. Uh, you will be able to consume it, uh, uh, apply the steps up to that point, and provide feedback, comments, please, on what needs to be clarified, what's not clear, if this is working, if this makes sense, if it's too fast, if it has um, background elevated music in it that's distracting, uh, which is like the number one comment out of all the SharePoint videos I've released, which is funny. Uh, but, um, you know, it, 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 but it helps me, right? So, you know, the vid, like, for example, I, I tease about it, but the background music on the uh, SharePoint 2013 Basics video uh, was such a distraction. And I didn't realize it, right? I mean, because it didn't distract me, and I got a lot of feedback that for others it wasn't a distraction. But 
And it was something simple. It's like, okay, why have that if it doesn't add value and it's more harm than good? Just remove it. So after that video, I mean, I pulled all of that stuff out. I have it in the intro and all this other good stuff, which you just heard, right? But um, yeah, it, it's not one of those things that are required. So stuff like that uh, really helps. Uh, some of that just kind of flew right above my head, right? It's like, oh, duh, you know, some people need need to be focused and, you know, want to be tuned in to, to what's being presented here. Um Another thing I like is that I noticed just from the analytics that a lot of my videos are consumed uh, at the first six minutes. Then there's a break. Then they come back and consume their, the middle chunk. So really like in six to eight minute chunks, uh, that's something I'm going to take into consideration. I know with these technical videos, it's very hard to, to cram a lot of that in within that short amount of time frame. But I think I can definitely try to keep these under uh 30 minutes right so the goal would be to keep these at 20 to 30 minute chunks uh get a key concept in there so there's a clear beginning there's a clear end a clear breaking point uh and then we can move forward from there so your feedback and your comments are going to be key and then lastly is patience right so i'm just like you i'm a consultant uh i'm in and out uh this this video uh teaching mode uh but you know when when i have a, a light period or when i have breathing room i try to hit this thing as hard as i can uh, to get most of these cranked out as you know as soon as i can but you know there may be a gap so patience please if you're if, obviously if there's any questions definitely reach out. I am very responsive. I, you know, you hit me up on LinkedIn or you hit me up in the comment section right here. I have all my notifications enabled. So uh, as soon as you leave a comment, I'll respond as soon as I can. And, and here's another thing, because we are going to drip approach, make sure you subscribe. And I believe uh, there's a new, I haven't seen it yet, but I see in other people's videos that there are notifications that you probably want to enable. That way, when I drop a new video, you get the notification and you're able to jump in on it uh, right away. Okay. All right. Enough babbling. Let's take a look at this design that we're going to do. So here's uh, what we got here. So this uh, job portal starter, starter kit, right? You should have access to that. So uh, that link is going to give you that zip file. In that zip file, it's going to be this job portal starter. Um, let's, let's take a look and see what's in here. So you have a deploy there. You're going to have this master page starter here in the master page starter folder. I have uh, a set for 2013. I have a set for SharePoint 2016. Uh, and then I have the design file. So what I'm going to do, and don't worry, I'm going to show you how to build this uh, SharePoint solution. The, yeah, so Visual Studio Community 2017 is what we're going to be using. I'm going to show you how to build this from scratch, right, in the next video when we actually walk through the master page piece. But what I want to do, I want to show you design. So in it, just high level real quick, uh, we have the design folder that has all the design files in there. We have the master page, which is going to be mapped to the master page gallery. And we have the style library, which is going to be mapped to the style library uh, within SharePoint. And uh, I'll show you how to wire up publishing to where we can make changes here, publish it, and see it in SharePoint. Uh, and again, this is on my laptop, no SharePoint uh, installed. And my SharePoint is actually a re remote. Uh, it's actually a cloud share instance. So I, so if you are just a small plug for cloud share, no affiliation, no kickback or anything like that. I think it's just a really cool solution. Uh, you can go out to cloud share. I think it's ninety nine dollars a month or a fourteen day trial or something like that. So you can test it, test drive it for free. But basically, you can go out there, you can get a template. And you have SharePoint 2013, boom, ready to go. SharePoint 2010, boom, as a template, ready to go. All configured, all installed, service accounts, all this stuff, all, all configured and enabled. So that way you can spin that up and get right to the meat of it and not spend a lot of your time installing SharePoint, going through patches, going through CPU updates and all this other good stuff, uh, SQL installs and all this stuff. All of these templates are ready to go. They're single server instances. They're great uh sandbox development lab type environments right um to where you can get in there play around with it and uh I even go back to i think they still they may even still have a 20 a 2007 uh template out there so go to cloud cloudshare.com and check it out so that's what i'll be using i'm just using the sharepoint 20 because I, I don't have service right i don't do these do those vms and, and install sharepoint on my laptop or any of that stuff i haven't done that for probably five years now everything i do is either vm or it's in the cloud 
And I think cloud share is just an easy way to do that. Okay, so let's take a look at this design. So I'm gonna just pull this up in the browser. And basically, as you can see, what we're gonna build is a job portal, right? So this, this guy has like a nice little carousel. It spins. Uh, it actually has this uh, search uh, filter capability right here in the carousel. Uh, we have uh, featured jobs here. So all of these are going to be jobs and it shows what's featured. Uh, you can browse the different jobs by category. Uh, these are testimonials of, I guess, candidates or employers. Uh, here's a blog section. So if you have a blog, this is a summary of the blog. And if you click on here, here's the detail of the blog. Uh, so yeah, so we're, we're going to build this out. And we're going to build this in SharePoint. And as I mentioned before, we're going to try to get this thing as pixel perfect as possible. So we're going to have the custom navigation with the sub menus, login, uh, ignore that, uh, submit job. I don't think we're going to do that. So this designer built this more so as a recruiter website who is actually recruiting uh, candidates for different employers, right? Almost like a LinkedIn type piece, if you just looked at the, the job piece of, of LinkedIn. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have to rename some of this because our concept is gonna be, we're gonna have a job portal, but basically this is where HR is gonna post open positions within the organization. So instead of employers, we're gonna be looking more so like departments or managers. And then uh, in the, the employer section where basically they just list out jobs, uh, we're gonna rebrand this or relabel most of this to be uh, different uh, opportunities within a particular department. I think the keywords, the categories, all this stuff still holds true. Um, Employer detail, this may be like apartment, uh, I'm sorry, department detail, uh, the location. We, we try to keep most of this, right? Because I think a lot of this is goodness. Like, okay, how do you integrate with Google Maps or how do you, you know, pull some of this stuff? What's the technical design approach on breaking this page up? And, you know, how you want to store this data? What's going to be a list? What's going to be a page? What's going to be uh, documents or details stored in document library? So we're going to go through all that. Um, about us uh, this is just a content page maybe we'll spin this out we'll see how things go login registration we don't need that right we just assume that if you're on this page you're already authenticated through um active directory contact us this would be a good good example right how do you take a form uh submit that and maybe store that data in the sharepoint list or something like that so we'll walk through that piece of it so basically this is it um uh, this is the grid of the job so you can do different layouts. I think that would be cool to show, you know, how we can do different layouts. Uh, should we apply for a job? Let's see what this looks like. Uh, name. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, maybe, maybe. maybe. We'll take a look at this. We'll see how far we get. I can't promise we would put this in, but I think I think there was some goodness in here as in, okay, how do you pull the current user's information from their profile, right, to pre-populate all this? Um this might be good. Like, how do you upload a file and use Angular to store it into a SharePoint uh, document library? Uh, bu, 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 bu. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I mean, I want to give you enough to be dangerous and set the set the, a great foundation on reading and writing uh, using Angular and interacting with SharePoint. Uh, so yeah. So I think we uh, picked that up. I think the blog section would be good. I think a lot of organizations really like the concept of blog, and I think the out-of-the-box SharePoint blog is horrible, especially in 2013, 2016. It may be better in the modern uh, the modern sites in SharePoint Online, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, so that's it. So, you know, this is it doesn't look like much now because they took all the pictures out. Uh, I guess that's more of a uh, a rights thing to, to those photos, right? So... But we'll spruce it up, we'll make it look nice and pretty, and we'll get this thing working in SharePoint. Let's see if it's responsive. So if I squeeze it, yep, no horizontal scroll bar, everything's stacking. Yeah, I think you can read that easily on a mobile phone vertical view, right? The menu collapse. Oh, wow, they did the sub menu in the mobile view. Okay, we'll do that. I mean, we're, gonna, we're not gonna critique the UX piece of this. We just want to get this migrate into SharePoint and get it looking pixel perfect. All right, so that's that. So this is just the intro.
In the next video, we're actually going to set up our master page project and uh, really start to get this primed up. All right, see you in the next video. Again, subscribe, turn on notifications so as these videos drop, you can uh, chime in and get comments in so I can roll those into the next video. All right, take care.